Hi everybody, Mr. McKenna here again, coming at you with another article from the day to facilitate, sorry, your quizzing, your reading, your keeping up to date with current events, your critical thinking and your uh, general worldly knowledge. Okay, let's jump straight into it. Today, uh, we have a very, very important article. Yesterday, um, sorry, what was that? Tuesday even, was the uh, funeral of George Floyd very obviously politically charged uh, very important uh, topic very important debate right now regarding black lives matter uh, regarding civil rights um so today's article is entitled the man who changed history is laid to rest and you can find it on the day in the usual place it'll be maybe two or three articles down on the front page uh, is george floyd the rosa parks of our time when Parks refused to give up her seat, she had no idea she would become a catalyst for sweeping change. Now, Floyd looks set to do the same. The scenes in George Floyd's home city of Houston yesterday brimmed with emotion. As people gathered for the funeral of the victim of police brutality, bouquets of flowers were piled high at the Fountain of Praise Church. Others were laid in front of an impromptu memorial, a mural showing Floyd with angel's wings, as mourners knelt in silent prayer. In life, George Floyd was no angel. He had served time in prison for armed robbery, but his death has turned him into a symbol of the struggle for black emancipation, which is recognized across the world. He intentionally become part of history. Rosa Parks also became an icon of black rights by accident. She was not intending to make a point when she boarded a segregated bus in Montgomery in Alabama in 1955. She obediently avoided the seats reserved for white people. Only once those seats were full and the driver told to give up hers did she choose defiance. Her arrest led to a year-long boycott of public buses, which resulted in a change of the law. The Welsh sailor Robert Jenkins certainly did not expect to have a warrant named after him when Spanish officers boarded his ship in 1731 and cut off his ear as a punishment for smuggling. Eight years later, the British government after a long trade dispute with Spain, used the incident as an excuse for open hostilities. The War of Jenkins' Year lasted for nine years. Nor did Belgian footballer Jean-Marc Bosman expect to change the face of international sport when he demanded a transfer from RC Liège to a French club. Liège's refusal led to a ruling in 1995 by the European Court of Justice, which allowed the free movement of players between countries and any restrictions on the number of foreign players a team could field. There have even been accidental monarchs. Lady Jane Grey had no thought of becoming Queen of England in 1553 until her dying cousin, Edward VI, named her as his successor in preference to his older sister. Mary Jane was soon overthrown and executed by Mary for taking the crown. Though she insisted that touching the procurement and desire thereof by me or on behalf, I do wash my hands thereof in innocency. Is George Floyd the Rosa Parks of our time? Well, they're suggesting there's a seismic shift. Yes, say some, say some, sorry. including the presumptive presidential candidate Joe Biden. Though there have been many black victims of police brutality in the US before, none have caused the same degree of outrage across the world. In Minneapolis, where Floyd died, the city council has already voted to dismantle the public department and replace it with a new system of public safety. This is just the beginning. No, say more cautious types. We have seen so many killings before, and ultimately, they changed nothing. In the words of the social scientist Kenneth Clark, commenting on the Kerner Commission report on racial unrest in the 1960s, is a kind of Alice in Wonderland, with the same moving pictures shown over and over again. The same analysis, same recommendations, and the same inaction. So again, as usual with today, posing a question for you to answer. Um, do you think, do you believe that the death of the murder of George Floyd will lead to huge sweeping social change. Maybe. This is exactly what the point of the article is. So a couple of the questions for you to consider. Would you join a bus boycott for a cause, a just cause, even if it meant walking five miles to school? Is that something you could contemplate? Or is history determined more by outstanding individuals or by mass movements? Do we uh, do we need individuals to stand up for something or does it have to be a huge groundswell of opinion? Again, up to you. So, a few of the key words in here. Rosa Parks was a catalyst. Catalyst is exactly to start something. 
Um, you may well have studied catalysts and science. You know, you'll need fuel, air, uh, and a flame to start a fire. These are the catalysts for flame. Sweeping huge amounts of change. Um, Houston is the largest city in Texas. It's actually best known for the home of the Flight Control Center for America's space program. Yeah, a little bit of trivia there for you. You may all know about Florida and Cape Canaveral. Well, Florida is where they launch from. But after 20, 30 seconds of uh, flight, uh, Houston takes over all flight operations for any mission into space. Yeah, a little bit crazy for you. Others were laid in front of an impromptu memorial. Impromptu is exactly that. It's not planned in advance. Uh, it's improvised. These, uh, again, things like these murals at the top of the page here would have been impromptu. Come out of nowhere. That had to, you know, just as a result of a swell of public opinion. And let's talk about the struggle for mass black emancipation. Emanci you could spend days reading about emancipation. But in short, it was the process of being set free from legal, social, and political restrictions. Liberation. Um, the, the Emancipation Proclamation that Martin Luther King may have heard of, you know, the idea that black people could be treated the same, given the same rights and the right to vote, which actually many of them didn't have. I have no doubt you've heard the name Rosa Parks. Um, she was a highly respected middle-aged woman. Um, she was seen as the ideal person to challenge the state segregation law because she had no prior history of any kind of crime. Um, so she stood as a figurehead for social change, very, very importantly. Uh, when she died in 2005, she became the first woman to lie in honour um, in the US Capitol Rotunda for public viewing. She boarded that bus in Montgomery in Alabama, which is a city, rather wrongly, uh, built on the profits of cotton and slave trades. It was also home to Martin Luther King who led the bus boycotts. Again, it seems like such a, a coincidence that it should happen like that. Um, so a year-long boycott, again, a boycott is um, refusing to have financial or social relations with a country organization or a person. Um, goes back to the name Captain Boycott, who was a land agent in 19th century Ireland. He treated sub tenants so badly, shops refused to serve him. Um, it's when you talk, might refuse to engage, as they've suggested. Even the story of Jean-Marc Bosman, um, which is really interesting because uh, up to that point, if you were contracted to a football club, if you wanted to move clubs, you had zero say in it. The club controls your contract. Um, it was only, uh, or you had to buy yourself out of it. He obviously wasn't happy with this. And now we have, you've probably heard of Bosman transfers, where a student, uh, still, where... Uh, footballers move near the end of the contract or they agree to move from one contract to another. Well, that's all because of Jean-Marc Bosman. Lady Jane Grey, um, fascinating character in history. She was the nine-day queen because her role was so short. She had no intention of becoming queen. Um, but she was chosen by Edward because he wanted a Protestant to succeed him, whereas Mary was a Catholic. And again, uh, if we talk about civil unrest, lots of disputes come about as regards to religion in the history of Britain. And that phrase, um, I do wash my hands thereof in innocency. Before she was executed, which she was, um, she said she never wanted the throne of England in the first place. So she didn't feel that she'd done anything wrong. She did as she was told and was really a victim of the, the circumstances. Um, interesting that they that Joe Biden is, is called the presumptive presidential candidate. It's not been decided yet he is going to stand for his political party but it looks like he will on behalf of them and the Kerner Commission was set up um, well he was a government of Illinois and he prioritized equal access to jobs and housing campaigned for an increase in the number of black army officers so fascinating article quite a bit of history there for you which you may not be aware of the civil rights movement of course is nothing new um, it's come about um, has been about for centuries um, and again, the question you have to ask yourself is, is, is George Floyd's uh, untimely death just another part of that? Is it going to say a huge change? Uh, who knows? Hopefully. You know, fingers crossed we'll see some really significant positive change as a result of this. But as always, that's for you to decide and form your opinion on, your critical mindset on. Okay, as I mentioned yesterday, just very quickly, uh, more details to follow. Uh, star tests will be happening as part of assessment week at the end of this month. In your lessons, your teachers will talk about this a little bit more. Uh, we'll be sending out instructions and videos, make sure you can access that 
and uh, demonstrate all the great progress you've been making in your reading uh, since we went into lockdown. So, uh, as always, good stuff. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I found it really fascinating. Take good care of yourself, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.